Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. The topic which I am discussing today is pneumoconiosis. This is the part 1 of pneumoconiosis where I'll be discussing in detail about the coal workers pneumoconiosis. So this is the overview. Uh, we will see how to define pneumoconiosis and we'll understand the pathogenesis, some general principles of pathogenesis and in detail about the coal workers pneumoconiosis which includes the spectrum of the disease, the morphology and the clinical features and a bit about management. So pneumoconiosis is a term which is coined from the Greek word pneumo meaning lung and conis meaning dust. So that means we are talking about a dust disease. Okay, so pneumoconiosis was introduced in the 19th century to describe non-neoplastic lung reaction. Remember, this is a non-neoplastic lung reaction which occurs due to the inhalation of mineral dust encountered in the workplace. This was the earlier definition. But now, the definition also includes diseases which are induced by chemical fumes and vapors. So, pneumoconiosis is a non-neoplastic lung reaction which occurs due to inhalation of mineral dust and chemical fumes and vapors which are encountered in the workplace. So, these are other ways also referred to as occupational lung diseases. So, what are all the agents which can cause lung disease? These are broadly categorized into mineral dust which includes coal dust, silica, asbestos, beryllium, iron oxide, barium sulfate, tin oxide and so on. Second category is the organic dust that induces hypersensitivity pneumonitis which includes moldy hay, bagasses, the bird droppings. Thirdly, the organic dust that induces asthma which includes cotton, flax, hemp, you know, red cedar dust. And lastly, as I told you, the chemical fumes and vapors which includes you know, chemicals like nitrous oxide, sulfur dioxide, ammonia, benzene and all forms of insecticides. So these are all the various agents which can result in pneumoconiosis. So let us understand the pathogenesis, some general aspects of uh, the pathogenesis of pneumoconiosis. The, the development of pneumoconiosis depends on various factors. The number one factor is the dust retention. This is the most important factor which determines the outcome of pneumoconiosis. Okay, So when I say dust retention which, which is further dependent upon the amount of dust which is concentrated in the ambient air, that means we are talking about the density of the dust in the ambient air. It also depends upon the duration of exposure. The longer the exposure, the more the dust which are which is retained in the lungs, right? And also depends upon the effectiveness of our normal clearance mechanisms. Okay. If for any reason the normal clearance mechanism is hampered or you know lost, that means more and more dust particles can gain entry into the lung spaces, right? So the most important defense mechanism is your upper respiratory tract, right? The mucociliary clearance mechanism. If that is damaged, particularly in individuals who smoke, okay, smoking is an important determinant in the development of pneumoconiosis, okay? So dust retention is the first important factor. The second one is the particle size. So pneumoconiosis depends upon the size of the particle. Particle size 1 to 5 micron meter in diameter are the most dangerous particle size because these are the tiniest particles which can you know get into the terminal bronchioles as well as the alveoli. So that means it can essentially you know involve all parts of the lung parenchyma. So the bigger the particle, they can get stuck in some parts of bronchioles, terminal bronchioles, but then the smaller particles can penetrate up to the level of alveoli and that can cause you know, severe lung diseases. The third one, not only particle size, it also depends upon the solubility and the cytotoxicity of the particle involved. Okay, if the particle is highly soluble, that means you know, the cytotoxic effect will be very rapid. It might result in rapidly developing lung injury. So if the particle is less soluble, okay, if the particle is less soluble, that means the clearing of these dust particles will be hampered, will be delayed and that might elicit a chronic inflammatory reaction leading to fibrosis. So highly soluble resulting in rapid lung injury, less soluble resulting in chronic lung injury. The fourth one is particle uptake by the epithelial cells. So we all know whenever we inhale dust that will be in the cavities, you know, in, in the air spaces rather, in the air spaces. But then it has to be taken up by the epithelial cells and from the epithelial cells it has to egress through the epithelial cells into the interstitium. So that means 
these you know this mechanism that is a particle update by epithelial cells is the one which allows direct interaction with the fibroblasts and the interstitial macrophages that's also important factor and lastly activation of inflammasome this activation occurs after the dust particles are phagocytosed this activation is the one which amplifies the intensity of local reaction it amplifies or increases the duration of the local reaction okay so these are the various factors which are involved in the development of pneumoconiosis remember these five important factors one is the retention of dust two particle size three solubility and cytotoxicity four uptake by epithelial cells and five activation of inflammasome and also remember that smoking is one thing which is common to all pneumoconiosis which hampers the mucociliary clearance and thereby getting and thereby you know the the person or individual is more prone for the development of any sort of occupational dust lung diseases now having said that only small percentage of exposed people develop occupational lung diseases so that means to say that you know there is some amount of genetic predisposition in the development of pneumoconiosis so not everybody will develop pneumoconiosis only those individuals who are genetically predisposed will develop pneumoconiosis now moving on we will see what is this coal workers pneumoconiosis as the name says this is an occupational lung disease occurring in people who work in coal mining industries right so basically this is because of inhalation of coal particles and other admixed forms of dust in those miners that is coal workers pneumoconiosis now the spectrum of disease is varied it will be in these three forms one is anthracosis which is an asymptomatic form of coal workers pneumoconiosis the second one is simple coal worker pneumoconiosis where there will be little pulmonary dysfunction or even there might these patients might also be asymptomatic the third one is complicated coal workers pneumoconiosis which is also referred to as a progressive massive fibrosis where there will be compromised lung function now what are the morphological features of these three anthracosis you know normally these carbon particles are the coal worker coal pigment you know it is black in color so what you see is deposition of black pigments throughout the lung parenchyma in the anthracotic lung you see tiny black pigmentation which is scattered throughout the lung parenchyma whereas in simple coal worker pneumoconiosis these black pigmentations are a bit larger they are in the form of macules now which can be palpable or non palpable non palpable which are darkly pigmented foci whereas in the case of complicated coal workers pneumoconiosis these you know they coalesce and then expand which result in the formation of heavily pigmented and these are extremely destructive fibrotic nodules this takes many many years to develop so this will be always in the background of simple coal workers pneumoconiosis which might take a large I mean more number of years for it to develop into a progressive massive fibrosis stage now what is the microscopic features of each one of these in the anthracosis what we see is just the presence of pigment laden macrophages in the interstitium that's a simple anthracotic lung and the second one in simple coal workers pneumoconiosis what you see you see the same deposition of black pigment but then you do find some amount of fibrosis the beginning the early fibrosis is what you see in simple coal workers pneumoconiosis and this is found within and around the walls of respiratory bronchioles and the alveolar ducts very rarely you can encounter you know the nodules of fibrous tissue which are surrounded by these pigment laden macrophages or the presence of pigment within these fibrous nodules the last stage is the progressive massive fibrosis stage where you find larger coarse collagen bundles which are arranged in haphazard manner interspersed with black pigment as i said this is a progression of disease here you find less of fibrosis here the fibrosis is more and more haphazard okay you find dark pigment interspersed in between and also you find is the presence of cicatrical type of emphysema these air spaces are dilated because of this long standing scar or contraction because of fibrosis 
that's in a presence of cyclical emphysema with or without the presence of bullae you find in progressive massive fibrosis now what are all the clinical features usually uh, colvacus pneumoconiosus has a benign course and the features depends upon the stage with which we are dealing with it do not affect lung function in majority of cases but in 10% of cases they progress to progress to progressive massive fibrosis or complicated colvacus pneumoconiosis stage where which leads to increasing pulmonary dysfunction there will be pulmonary hypertension and also there can be presence of cord pulmonail now how do you treat uh, colvacus pneumoconiosis there is no cure for colvacus pneumoconiosis all you have to do is symptomatic treatment or support your respiratory care okay you ask the person uh, to stop smoking if he is smoking and you you know prevent the uh, occurrence of infections in the form of vaccinations the influenza or pneumococcal vaccination so that's about uh, pneumoconiosis in general and uh, more about colvacus pneumoconiosis thank you for watching if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share in the next part i'll be discussing in detail about silicosis bye bye